So welcome everybody to this Sunday night call, a very popular one. It is lovely to see all your faces. Um, my name is Suzanne Burns and I am excited to host the call this evening with two wonderful um, colleagues, let's say, of Juice Plus who are also um, experts in their field in nutrition, um, well, actually in other things, but I will introduce them, but we are uh, calling on their knowledge in the area of nutrition this evening. So let me introduce first Jeffrey Montague Smith, who is a registered osteopath practicing integrated osteopathic medicine uh, from the large complementary health clinic he runs with his wife, Helen, in Tunbridge Wells, and from his practice in Harley Street, London. So Jeff was at the launch of Juice Plus in Dallas over 23 years ago. How exciting. And he recommends Juice Plus to all of his patients who are interested in optimal health as part of his integrated osteopathic work. So that says a lot in itself, I would say. And Jeff runs his Juice Plus business alongside three other businesses. So for those people who are saying, I'm too busy for Juice Plus, uh, think on. And a busy family life as a husband and father to three children. He made it to the NMD position in just over two years part-time and has recently uh, made it to the IMD position, which has been fantastic uh, to hear. So that was in, April, uh, in May of this year. No, May, April. April of this year. So what inspires Jeff to share the Juice Plus story is the quality of the product backed up by the clinical research proving its efficiency. Uh, so we're really privileged to have Jeff take the time out this evening and uh, answer some questions on this call. We've also got James Knight uh, on the call. James's background is an army physical training instructor a strength and conditioning coach for professional athletes and as a personal trainer. James, I know firsthand from hearing him speak many times, has a wealth of knowledge and expertise in nutrition and gets amazing results with clients across the board. So we've really got powerhouses on the call this evening. And so I'm going to answer some questions that have generally come in and um, we'll get uh, Jeff and James to answer them. And then I will do my best during the call uh, if you post a question in the chat to uh, ask that question as well. So thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time out for being on the call. It's really great to see you here. So I'm going to start with the questions. One of the questions would be, why do you see Juice Plus as an essential part of everyone's well-being strategy just go you know whoever wants to answer just jump in go on jeff ladies first well i'm always <laughs> i've been so professional and then straight away it's a good job i'm in touch with my feminine side isn't it <laughs> um so, okay so look the question is why is it an essential part of everyone's strategy for well-being the, the way i look at that we are <laughs> We're all faced with a situation where we're in a, an increasingly toxic world. And I would say that the toxic burden on the human body now is greater than it ever has been. And we call those toxins xenobiotics. That means they're foreign biological agents, whether that's a chemical detergent or whether it's a metal from the fillings in your mouth or, you know, whether it's a, a bacterial uh, infestation or a yeast or, you know, we are literally struggling with all these toxins on a daily basis and what we see with a lot of people is certainly in the clinical work that I do we see an awful lot of what we call auto intoxication because we have a situation now where the drainage pathways so the liver system and the lymph and the skin and the bowels and the kidneys and all the organs of elimination and detoxification are really struggling to cope with the fact that we've got this burden of toxicity. Um, and you know what, the thing is it's transgenerational, so it's getting worse with each passing generation, mostly because of dietary habits. We've, we've got, a, I think, acclimatized to eating food-like products. They're not, it's not actually food, it's just 
stuff that looks like food in packets. And, um, you know, I always say when you go into the supermarket and you look at the first three aisles in the supermarket, generally speaking, that's real food and everything else is just rubbish in packets. And most people are now, you know, the clear indication is that we're, we're kind of, you know, in the midst of plenty, we're malnourished. So we obviously, with Juice Plus, have an opportunity to bridge the gap between what the physical body needs in terms of how to fuel itself for repair and renewal and how to uh, survive in this world of toxicity, how to keep the drainage and the emunctories, these organs of elimination, how to keep those, those guys working properly. And, you know, due to the lack of nutrients in our food and the fact that five a day is now clearly not enough because the research is pointing more towards you know, 13 servings a day. No one can do that. I, look, I'm an enlightened uh, alternative holistic practitioner and I physically can't eat 13 servings of raw fruits, vegetables and berries every day. So what's my option? My only option is Juice Plus. So that's how I answer that question. That's great. That's great. And what is, so obviously that is incorporating it into um, you, everybody's day. And I know that there's generally, you know, there's some focus put on detoxing and cleansing. And so why would Juice Plus pay, play a key role in that general question? I think James may be. Uh, yeah, All right. I'll, go, I'll go with that one. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, this might be a bit of a long-winded um, answer. I don't think that's what's going to be the case for tonight. But um Detox and cleansing is, um, has, again, more misconstrued information about it. Um, and again, it's down to bad representation, bad trainers, and so forth. And they've kind of killed the whole purpose of detoxification and cleansing. But we are going to be hypocritical if we're going to say, yeah, I'm going to go on a detox and cleanse, and yet you're going to spray all these chemicals to make us smell nice and put fluoride on our teeth and so forth. We, we can never really 100% detoxify ourselves. We just can't. Our organs are probably are the best detoxification machines that we can have. But what detoxification and cleansing is, is about um, reducing the amount of toxins that we're exposed to. Just simple changes, all right? I hear a lot of trainers going on again, oh, it's ridiculous, what, you know, these detox plans. Yeah, the they can be. You, you hear about these um, water and dust diets on yoga retreats and hippie retreats and stuff like that. Yeah, that's going to be a problem because you're not supporting yourself along that cleanse. So what, what I'm going to just sort of give to you now is clarify what my perception of cleansing and why it's so important. You know, there's some really simple ways of doing these, these, these detoxes. You know, you're looking at nutrition is the only reason why we could be uh, healthy in our well-being. It's the only thing that supports our well-being. And when I explain this to people, obviously we've got the Transform 30 plan, which is fantastic. But I look at people, you know, having whole food, raw food of natural state, um, minim minimally cooked foods. That's more of the do's, the simple do's. And the don'ts is avoid sugar, flour, fructose high consumption certain oils which i'll explain to you in a second um and super superheated foods and processed foods those sort of do's and don'ts are very very good and if you start doing that you're going to sort of make major traction uh for better health but what jeff was talking about earlier was about toxins okay now metabolic disease is something i concentrate on now metabolic disorders um as well as uh, type 2 diabetes and so forth um, but metabolic disease is, um, is directly linked to inflammation. But most complex chronic diseases are linked to inflammation, all right? Um, and what is driving inflammation is the immune system. And what is making the immune system inflamed is the toxins. And toxins caused by inflammatory uh, bacteria in your gut. Um, and what makes inflammatory bacteria grow is sugar, flour, and fructose, in simple terms. Um, you give bacteria food, it will grow, it will manifest, okay, it will increase. But interestingly, if you give, uh, give them a carrot, for instance, the nutrients are bound within the carrot, so the energy is not given out to the bacteria. So you're feeding your body the correct foods that Mother Nature provides, we don't help our bacteria grow. Now, if you give the, your body synthetics or processed refined carbohydrates, say, okay, then this will in turn make the toxins. And this is what the problem is at the moment. And 
what is um, cleansing all about is reduction of toxins. Now, if I just go into my notes here, there's a few things that I try to sort of point out. Detoxification is about getting rid of uh, acidosis and toxemia. Um, and we want to make the body more alkaline and oxygen rich. And eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and drinking more water, and, but the fruits and vegetables as well have to be organic and non-genetically modified. We, if we eat a wide variety of that, then we're on, on a good course of detoxifying ourselves. But eating greens is really important. It contains a lot of chlorophyll, uh, which gives a body a lot of oxygen. And getting your body alkaline with good calcium, with good trace minerals, which are found in, uh, in, in fruits and vegetables, will help to alkalize the body. Um, now, an alkaline environment, uh, if it's set in the right zone, can basically stop disease in its tracks. And I'm talking cancers, okay? And a lot of doctors won't tell you this, because let's face it, cancer is big business, disease is big business. But you can, if, you've got a, if you create that alkaline environment, you can stop disease in its tracks. A, a disease only manifests itself in an acidic environment. And that's a known fact. I know Jeff will back me up on this. But also, if you can create a pH uh, level between... Uh, basically, your pH, I think, is still standing between 0 and 14. If you want a, a neutral pH level, I think it's around about 7.36. If you get slightly above that, around about 7.5, this is where you are in a healing pH level. So you, there is massive, massive proof now that you can stop cancer growing. You can destroy cancer uh, cells just by getting in that pH level. But this is why Juice Plus plays a role in this. You cannot detoxify and cleanse yourself without certain vitamins and minerals. You just can't. And the food that we eat supports these cleanses and detoxification. So when you see these detox and cleansing plans or these, these yoga retreats, I keep saying yoga, I shouldn't say that, but these detox retreats where they're living off water, dust, and cucumbers, then they're not going to um, support themselves along that cleanse. They're actually just going to, they're not rejuvenating, they're degenerating. All right, you need vitamin C because it's so powerful and one of the greatest healers you can have. Um, and it's also it's also been proven to help with uh, cardiovascular problems and so forth. We also need like vitamin E because um, this is great for lowering blood pressure. So you need lots of vitamins and minerals to support you on these cleanses and detoxifying. That's why Juice Plus, especially premium, is so valuable for this. And the, f and the funny thing is, the the great pharmaceutical industry again, as it is has used synthetic vitamin C and E in their tests to prove these, these so-called um, results um, because of what they found earlier in earlier studies. But unfortunately, it's synthetic and it never worked. Of course, it didn't work because it's not how nature intended. Okay, nature creates a problem. Nature creates a solution. So hopefully that answered your question. That is, <clears throat> yeah, that's excellent. Um, interestingly, I had, and not to open a can of worms, but I was talking to somebody last week who previously had been a professional athlete. And I was very surprised because when I was speaking about Juice Plus, he asked for the comparison for C9, now, he, which he seemed a fan of. And C9 is obviously another a, a program through a, another network marketing company. But it really is, I don't know completely about it, but I know it's with aloe vera and it's not eating a lot. It's some shakes and aloe vera and what have you. And I was really surprised at an athlete um, being pro that actually, because mostly my experience is... Um, you know, from an athlete's performance, you're looking to make sure you continue eating regularly to support and nutritionally to support the body. What, what, what is your thoughts on that? You know, if, if somebody is pro something like that, and as I say, I'm not looking to open a can of worms, but it just interested me because that's never been what I've understood. Well, I, I just quickly jump in there. The, 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 the C. Uh, don't worry about opening can of worms. I think <laughs> we, we are we live in a liberal country, country, but I think it's time to end all that. <laughs> well, as I say, no. Um, well, as I say, look, look, there's so many different things out there. But with athletes, the only time I would ever cleanse an athlete, ever cleanse an athlete, is in the the off season going into the preseason. 
I certainly wouldn't be doing it in season because they need the massive amount of macronutrients and micronutrients to help them with any production and performance and recovery. I wouldn't, I wouldn't cleanse them. That's me. Um, looking at the C9 from what I know of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to go into actually what's in it, but I a hundred percent do not agree with it. It well, will work. S and ends in T, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or B and ends in T. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the thing is, um, what what I'm what we're talking about in Juice Plus is okay, detoxification and cleansing. Juice Plus will help to support and rejuvenate the tissues while you're doing that because you need the micronutrients, but also you need the macronutrients to give you the energy as well. But the macronutrients need to come from a, a high biological value and as well, and that's why Juice Plus capsules and complete gives you that you've got the macronutrients and you've got the micronutrients to help you support you on that cleanse the c9 when it comes to athletes 100 percent no the only way i would say to do it is in the off season and if he is a professional athlete if he's saying that he's probably sponsored it he was a professional athlete and i do and i get the feeling that maybe his wife's involved in it is the gist well, of it I I'd just like to add to that. What I know about that particular program is that they're using soy isolates in the shakes. Mm, it's um, yeah. not a great. I mean, James, I think you're going to talk about the whole soy thing shortly and how you know overprocessed soy. Is very careful of. A lot of other products will use soy that comes from dubious sources and it is overprocessed, which I, I think James is planning to to share with you. But um, they're also isolated, you know, the vitamin support packages that are in there, they're all isolated vitamins. What we've got is food in a capsule. And I think mm. it's really important to understand that the polyphenols, the indole carbonyls, you know, if you take a cruciferous vegetable and you take it raw and you, you dry it the way the company have done at a low temperature to preserve all of those essential nutrients. And, you know, I'll talk about the research in a bit more detail later, hopefully, if there's a chance. But, you know, we've got we've got a product here that the drug companies, they have been trying to isolate the active ingredients in cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli because these are, anti, these, these are anti-carcinogenic. They, they support protection against the major serious degenerative diseases that we see and the metabolic diseases that we see. And that's really where I'm so excited because we can offer, we can offer people a, an option to literally bridge the gap, like I said earlier. But in a way, it's almost, I'm not going to say it's better than the actual food, because look, the, the, the produce that we use is clear of any herbicides or pesticides. It's been grown to full ripeness. It's literally ready for harvest. And then within 24, 48 hours, it's been, it's been put in a situation where the nutrients are locked in. And that is unheard of. So here we've got, you know, I would say almost a better than organic product that's been allowed to mature to the point where all the nutrition is locked in. And we're then given that in the variety that come in that, in that particular formulation, you know, it, there's nothing to compare to it. And, you know, without getting into the research side now, you won't find another product that is formulated in the way that ours is. And if you are looking for alternative uh, green formulas or whatever you're going to do, a big disadvantage of those is that they often have herbs in them. They've got maca in them. They've got Cardus marianus, dandelion, burdock. Now, you can't take those herbal infused formulas every single day of your life for the rest of your life because you get a tolerance to the herbal component. It's not a good idea to do that. Just like with the adaptogenic herbs, which support adrenal function, you can't do this ongoing. Juice Plus is food. I mean, these are fruits, vegetables, and berries. You can take these every single day of your life for the rest of your life and i would recommend that you do so you know the methylation pathways we talked about the emunctories and the organs of elimination if they're not fueled with those essential phytonutrients vitamins minerals enzymes all the things that are there present in the living food in a raw state we can't get the liver methylating we can't get the detoxification pathways and and the the energy pathways the atp pathways switched on properly the mitochondria suffer. I mean, it's it's genius what the what the company have given us. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful. Sorry, I, get, I get a bit excited. I'm sorry. It's good to see, to be honest, because uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? And if you get excited, we get excited, even more excited. So. I'm excited for you, Jeff. Really am. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I'm excited for you, James, because seeing as we've touched on soy, I'd like to look at it even further, and I know that you would too. So uh, what oh. is, or generally to, to both of you, let's talk about you more than me, uh, views on soy protein and why complete is so different. Um, right, okay, so uh, I thought about this today and I put a load of notes together, so I will be seeming to read because there is so much misconstrued information about soy and guess what i was a skeptical trainer many years years ago and i was told it was bad and that's just the way it is you got to look at the food industry and all the the whole industry is sort of warped by one pharmaceutical industry okay they we're owned it's probably the dairy industry um and very badly trained medical professions on on nutrition and i can explain more about that later if you want i don't want to say anything bad in reference to doctors because I know you do a fantastic job. But, um, you know, unfortunately, we're seeking help from people that don't understand about nutrition as well. Jeff is obviously um, different to that. But soy, anyway. So soy is, for me, um, a wonderful source of protein. This is me thinking out loud now. It's a wonderful source. But, you know, firstly, when I recommend complete, I always recommend dec decreasing the amount of animal food that you take in. Um, and also it's not, doesn't mean become a vegetarian, but also to increase the amount of vegetable protein. All right. So I make people aware of that first. And that is my prime goal is getting people educated and eating varieties of different sources of vegetable proteins as well. And soy being one of them, right? But, um, soy has many wonderful forms, but is mainly used as a, a, a vegetable protein source. Okay. There is, um, you know, a lot of controversy about soy out there. And if you, you go on the internet or you can find all sorts of, you know, paranoid articles about dangers of soy and um, there is a lot of medical experts taking a, uh, talking about, you know, the danger of soy being an endocrine disruptor and promoting cancers and phytoestrogens being bad and so forth like that and linked to breast cancers. But the, um, the epi uh, epidemiological um, evidence from Asia is extremely reassuring to the population because, um, you know, they eat soy regularly and have uh, better health, better longevity, um, and particularly low rates of hormonal-driven uh, uh, cancers. You know, Jap Japanese women, uh, on, you know, traditionally have the lowest rates of breast cancer in the world. But if they move to like a West, uh, West, Westernized country, okay, they adopt to a Westernized ways and eating and, and obviously eating dairy as well, you know, the rates of breast cancer increase. Um, you know, Japanese eat soy, you know, at every, me every meal. I, I heard recently, well, read recently, they eat an average about 35 grams of soy per day. Um, but they, um, you know, they don't overindulge in it. And... Um, Basically, the the soy foods the eating you know is not is not a functional foods. Okay, it's 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 foods that are spiked with elements of soy. It's none of that. Um, a lot of products out there with soy contain uh, ingredients such as soy isolate or isolated soy protein. There are soy uh, fractions fractional elements of soy which we have uh, epidemiological uh, evidence about the safety of benefits. Um, I would advise eating products made with these things and. You know, the evidence is out there, guys, especially like stuff like fake meats, you know, fake hot dogs, luncheon meats, all these foods contain soy isolates. I mean, how many of you have had, you know, have had these so-called vegetarian sausages and so forth and thinking they're good for you, but they, they contain soy isolates. Um, just going through my, my, my notes here. Now, the majority of the time, I would say soy is bad for you, okay? This is what I would say. but. Um, Soy was uh, popularized because, they were found, because it was first found in Okinawa, Japan. They consumed a lot of soy. The problem is it was a different type of soy than we consume today. The issue with soy is most soy today contains something called uh, phytoestrogens. And these phytoestrogens are estrogen mimics in the body. And this is what they're saying. And the soy, if you, make, if you consume... Uh, sorry, hang on a second. My thing's gone all blurry. Hang on, you have to come back to me. It's all gone all blurry. Come back to me in a second, Suzanne. Yeah, what I'd, what I'd add to that, James, I mean, I think, you know, the point, the point that we see, I mean, I've, I've spoken several times at the Western Christ Foundation conferences, which are big nutrition conferences. 
And James touched on food politics there. And, you know, there are organisations where they're looking at, um, you know, people's consumption of meat and dairy and so forth. And, you know, the Western Price Foundation are very, very pro raw milk, um, you know, a certain amount of animal fat. And they're very, very anti-soy. And actually, when you look at the sort, of the sort of soy that they're against, you have to actually agree with them because most of the soy out there is genetically modified soy. It's been sprayed with glyphosate, which, may, which means not only have you got the GM organisms in there, but you've got all the toxins of that Monsanto um, herbicide on it. And that now we know is cancer causing. So quite rightly, the advice should be, you need to avoid soy wherever possible if it's a if it's a GMO, non-organic, isolated, uh, which means you know it's been chemically processed. Now the soy that's in our product um, is cold water washed, minimally processed. It's non-GMO, so it's organic. It's it's clean. It's not been isolated away. You know we've got everything there that should be there, and. This is why, you know, I can confidently take it and I can recommend it. I mean, I, I have about three or four shakes a week on a, on a week where I'm using it a lot. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a good breakfast on the run for me or a good lunch. But, um, you know, what I would say is that we're dealing with a, different, with a different ingredient here. And when you compare what's in our product to a lot of the other pr plant protein shakes, I think about, I think the figures are like one and a half percent of the world's soy product is organic non-gmo and i think the stats are that we use half of the world's organic soy in our product so we're one of the major buyers of organic soy now um you know you just have to tell people to be careful now the phytoestrogens that are in the soy um you know a lot of women are getting hormone related health issues because there are estrogen metabolites flying around the body, which are actually harmful. There are harmful kinds of estrogen. And for a lot of women, these cause problems. Now, if those estrogens that are harmful go to the binding sites in the cells, it causes trouble. Now, phytoestrogens, which means plant estrogens, will actually go to the binding sites in the cells and the plant estrogens will kind of mimic the estrogen that's floating and it's actually protective. And this is what people don't realize. You have to really look at all the research and read around it. And then you hear that soy is a, an anti-nutrient. And then you hear that it's a goitrogen, which means it's going to mess the thyroid up. There's all sorts of political vested interests in there. And this is something I'm going to ch touch on when we get into the research side. You've got to understand that, you know, when you read stuff, sometimes there's an agenda. And it's quite often, I always say, follow the money. You know, find out who's writing it and figure out what their vested interest is, because that's where, you know, that's where a lot of the trouble comes from. So when you do a balanced research appraisal of what's going on around soy, and you look at uh, the natural types of soy, which are the ones that we have, and then the fermented soys, uh, you know, you, you don't have to have concerns. And, you know, I keep checking for man boobs. And so far, I know, I know James is thinking I'm looking a little bit feminine tonight, but so far, no man boobs. But can, can you hear me again? I'm going to just back, back up with uh, what you were saying. And so can I, can I just make sure, just before you say, James, because it, it ends up, I think for us lay people, it's quite a lot of information to take in. So mm. yes, definitely come back to you. But I think what would be useful as a summary, whether it's, you know, immediately or whatever, as a summary is, I know, obviously, you both are very happy with the soy incomplete. For example, Dr. Mitra Ray, Dr. Nigel Eccles are very happy with the soy incomplete, knowing all of the things that you've talked about. So what is it that has you sit comfortably, be happy with the, with the complete as a product and the soy that's used in it? Well, first off, we only really need to fear soy that's genetically modified. If we're being honest, okay. But I mean, like we said, when I saw it, Juice Plus Complete was, you know, is it uses a proprietary, low process, cold temperature water wash. It's non genetically modified soy. Now, in the in the fitness world, soy has a bad press because they say it hasn't got complete forms of protein. Yet some research does say it does, but it only damages lysine, which is an amino acid, when it's processed. But you know, and it's also it's also missing another one called methionine, so forth. 
again, it's all misconstrued information, and, and that is the thing. And the only research they've ever done on soy was on lab rats. You know, we're not lab rats, and they were fed processed soy and processed food at the same time. So I'm 100% down with it it's a wonderful source of protein and ours is the highest quality assured protein you can get which is all bioavailable and all absorbed so i'm 100 percent happy with it it's a great source of protein a great source of amino acid and it's definitely what your body needs the, the other thing just to close on the, on this part of the thing is that md anderson cancer research institute did a study with stage four ovarian cancer survivors and they used the capsules and the complete. Now, if there was any question whatsoever about there being any cancer risk or health risk from the ingredients that are in our product, they would never have got approval to do that study. Yeah, yeah. great. And <clears throat> sorry, I do. There's just a couple of questions coming through. One is that people suffering from hypothyroidism, I think, are told to avoid soya products and raw cruciferous vegetables is complete and are the veggie capsules safe to be taking for them on a regular basis? Me or you, uh, Yeah, so I can say that the patients that I've had that have been hypothyroid, I think, again, if you're talking about avoiding soy, generally it's because it's a soy isolate that would mess things up. We're not talking about that. And, um, you know, if you get, uh, look, thyroid, hypothyroid and thyroid issues, you cannot have a thyroid problem without an adrenal problem and a liver issue. So... If you start to nourish the body with the, with the nutrients that it needs to get balance across all those different systems, you know, we have had thyroid patients um, who you know, have needed, I mean, I've got one patient who was on 175 micrograms of thyroxine. Now, this isn't, a, this isn't us playing doctor, okay, because I want to make one thing clear. We land ourselves in a world of trouble if we start saying juice plus is a medicine. But... What I've observed, and this is a personal testimony for, for, from patients that I've had, the need for thyroxine in so many of our patients has reduced when they were on Juice Plus capsules, particularly, for a long period of time. And it did take time. So if you're hypothyroid um, and you're worried about soy being a goitrogen and you know, an anti-nutrient, you know, taking away the minerals and other things, uh, you know, we've we've got a clean soy protein, but I would focus more on the capsules and the and the health benefits that come from taking the capsules. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly, I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, <coughs> concur that if you've got hypothyroidism, that you shouldn't be on 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 our premium product. I would actually say the opposite. Yeah. Great, thank you. Another couple of quick questions, just because they've come through. How do you know? Uh, how can you the soy, soy in an ingredient list is non-GMO? Normally steak. Well, um, in our brochure, the, 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 the brochure for complete, it clearly says non-GMO. So we know that that's the case for ours, or they wouldn't be able to put it on the brochure. And I think what you have to do is if you're buying any other kind of soy product, tread with, tread with extreme caution. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, that's including those. soy milk and these sort of things. Yeah. These are all isolate soys. Okay, these yeah. are things you do need to avoid. Okay, you really do. There's, you know, there's, there's great sources out there. You've got Tampa and Tofu, all the good great proteins out there. Just, you know, these, these soy milks are just crazy. They're crazy. Okay, thank you. And I've just, I've got another conversation, uh, another question coming through. And again, you know, just from your perspective, but somebody who's saying that they have MS with a lot of brain lesions and also celiac, IBS, leaky gut, and was told no soy, only a small amount of fermented because it's in another form that is digestible. Is there anything to say on that? Just very uh, quickly. Yeah, just quickly on that. Sounds like that's a pretty uh, difficult situation from the standpoint of biochemical. Uh, look, that's someone who's very sick and there's probably a very, very damaged gut, which means that the soy proteins could be allergenic in a patient like that. I, I, would, I would advise them not to have any soy, actually even our one, because the soy proteins could be a problem. I would certainly recommend if there's a patient suffering with that kind of trouble, that they look up Dr. Terry Valls, which is W-A-H-L-S. She completely reversed her progressive MS, medical doctor, reversed her MS by clean eating and staying away from you know, bad food. So look up Dr. Terry Valls. Wow, that's amazing. That's great information. Thank you. And just one last thing on that from Nikki. Gary, uh, this is just a statement more than anything, but Gary Giles, who is... 
Uh, obviously, the key person with regards to the product in Juice Plus said that we grow our own soy, a strip about two miles wide and 25 miles long. Yeah. Um, two to three years ago, the strip that we were growing and it's cold washed and clean. So just yeah. for specific information on that, which is great. Thank you, Nikki. Um, so generally speaking, uh, why we've, we've done this call about nutrition. Obviously, Juice Plus plays a part in our nutrition. Why is, is nutrition so important to us in simple terms? Um, well, look, I think we've become, we have generally become so disconnected with food and our bodies, okay? You know, you look at um, the medical profession seem to think your body is uh, somehow disconnected from the food, the food that you feed it, uh, feed your body. You know, it's, it's crazy. I mean, when I explain to people, we, we kind of, we look, we live in such a sort of material type of society. So if I um, give you a material metaphor or a material explanation, it's, it's much, much easier to understand. So look at it. Um, what you eat and drink is digested. It becomes your blood composition. Your blood is made of what you eat and drink. Your blood circulates, okay, uh, throughout your body. So your blood brings the materials that, then become your organs that fuels your brain, your cognitive function, uh, that fuel the function of your organs, and then that re re replenishes and rebuilds all the cells of your body. And as you lose cells, you build new cells, you replace cells. So um, clearly, what's in your blood becomes your physical, physiological body. So then you literally are what you eat physically, and in it's it's such a true conclusion, an inescapable conclusion. So if you are eating junk, toxins and heavy metals, your body, uh, your brain, your organs, your skin, everything that's in your physical body becomes junk, um, becomes toxic, becomes processed. Not natural, okay? But yet yeah, that idea is not yet recognized by the entire system of, the mo of modern, modern medicine with all the development and millions and millions of dollars of research that we've done out there, they still cannot grasp a simple concept that a five-year-old can understand uh, almost automatically, and you are what you eat. So when we explain this to people, when I explain it to people, I say, look, you literally are what you eat. And just by that simple explanation there, you can understand everything we put in our bodies, the fluids we drink, the food we eat, all absorbed, and it becomes us. So that is why, without getting too scientific, nutrition is so important okay that's great and i think you know also on a simple very simple level we know that if we've spent the weekend on a hen do or a stag do compared to a weekend in a spa monday morning feels very differently to us doesn't it which does you know just from that uh, suggest that what we put in our body affects our mood our balance uh, yeah. Every, it affects our hormones. Everything you put into our, your body is all hormone related. Because okay, so, you know, if you want to get your hormones on your side, you've got to start with what you're putting in. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it doesn't need to be any more. You know, everything you need, you can drink it raises your cortisol, your insulin. I always, when I do talks, I usually talk about two big hormones. You know, your cortisol, catabolic hormone, and your insulin. You need to get your insulin on your side because that then, you know, when we're obese. We're looking at obesity at a mat, as, a, as a growing level, especially in the UK and Europe now. It's, it's a disease within itself, but that's the precursor for the next stages. You know, lifestyle diseases like type 2 diabetes, metabolic disorders, cardiovascular disease, death. That's how it works, and it's all linked to the food that we eat to start. And the medical, uh, sorry, the pharmaceutical worlds are loving us because we're keeping sicker for, for longer. They're earning more money. It's, it's totally true. It's all directly linked to the food we eat and our lifestyle choices. Yeah, and we, listen. We've been sold a lie. We've been sold a lie that longevity is promised. You know that we're all going to live to ninety. The people that are living to ninety right now are the post-war generation. They were rationed. They ate real food. They had very little sugar. They had uh, clean animal fats. To a certain extent, we can argue that the the bodies that are living now to the age of ninety and ninety-five are the byproduct of a clean environment where there was no herbicide or pesticide used, pretty much clean, you know, and they were really cooking their own food. And this is how I always say to my, my, my patients, eat like your grandfather used to eat and you'll live a long life. We're yeah. being sort of lie now. We've got, in our school, um, we've got two classes of 16, and I always tell this story. We've now got a situation where 32 mums 
we've got about five or six of those mums that have either had a cancer diagnosis, are in treatment for cancer, or have died from cancer. And that's, that's disgusting. So we're in a situation now where young women are going to doctors with non-communicable diseases like cancer, like breast, and they're being told it's normal. This is, this is what's going on. And that's preventable. And it's, this is what drives me to share this message. That if we can get people eating clean and looking after themselves and taking products that will help to uh, upregulate and, and balance out their metabolic processes, this is, what we're, this is what we're here to do. You know, yeah. It's a really, really important thing, particularly for the kids. Yeah, and it's also not about just living the, to a ripe old age, is it? It's living to a ripe old age with quality of life. Absolutely, yeah. but we've got a whole generation of children that are predicted to die. For the first time in history, we've got a generation of kids right now that are predicted to die before their parents. We've yeah. already got children now who are age 10, 11, 12 with type 2 diabetes. It wasn't called type 2 diabetes when I trained. It was called late onset diabetes. They changed the name of it because it's now not late onset. It's now coming when you're 10. And this is, this is what's driving me so crazy because, you know, it's all about, you know, we're living in Tunbridge Wells where I am. You know, we've got the educated affluent elite and they're still making these mistakes. It's not even like it's a, it's a sociological kind of gap that, that's, that's going on. I mean, it's, 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 oh, don't even get me started. Okay, we won't because we're at the wrong, wrong end of the call for that. Yeah. <laughs> but we mentioned, uh, just to touch on uh, earlier, we, there was a mention of macro and micro. If we're going to sort of understand mm -hmm. nutrition. Um, yeah. Just uh, elaborate a little bit on, on that and why we should be conscious yeah. of it and how, how we're supported through Juice Plus. Well, look, you know, macros and micros, okay? Macronutrients are your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. I'm just all disjointed. Oh, who's that? I hear an Irish person speaking. Hey. Sure. <laughs> Someone's, at, I think it's Mary Penrose. Do you? Uh, uh, yeah, that one. Um, yeah, so... Um, no, so my, my, micronutrients are your, your, what you're getting from your plants. Now, there's a great analogy or metaphor, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that, you know, your, your macronutrients, your protein, carbohydrates, fat is like your petrol, your diesel that makes the, the car go. Yeah, but the micronutrients is the oil that lubricates and keeps everything going. Now, you can run on the petrol for a, for a certain amount of time, but without the micronutrients, the oil, your car will break down, your engine will break down. That's exactly the same as what's happening in the body. Okay, now macronutrients are very valuable because they are used for fuel and energy and so forth. But we look at macronutrients as carbs, high refined carbohydrates. That's our westernized diet, our pastas and our breads. This is the same in professional sport. But you know, they, don't, they look at fats and everyone's got, oh, do want to touch fat? But no, there are good fats out there that we need, you know, and fibers and so forth. Macronutrients are really important. And if you want to link it to Juice Plus, Juice Plus Complete is the macronutrient. You know there is micronutrients in it, but it's the macronutrient that's in there. There's wonderful sources of proteins, plant-based proteins. There's dietary fibers. Interesting as well, the two fibers that you've got in there is obviously um, insoluble and soluble. And, you know, the insoluble help with the colon health. And the, 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 solub the soluble fiber helps to stabilize blood sugar and slows down the release of blood sugar into the blood. Okay, so we've got that in there as well. All right, it, it's just amazing. The micronutrients is within the capsules. All right, so you've got all the vitamins, the minerals, the phytochemicals, the antioxidants that you truly need to support your system as well. You've got the macronutrients in the complete, and you've got the micronutrients. Great, great. And in terms of, I think, you know, I'm, I'm asking this question but i and i think that we've touched on it and it wasn't it you know that was really where we were saying don't get started on it but the in terms of the health challenges going forward um why so so in mentioning those things before jeff and i know um James, you feel the same in, in terms of the challenges and, and put a, a good amount of focus on diabetes and education, etc. So what are the biggest health challenges going forward and what role do the Juice Plus products play have in meeting those challenges? Why are we messengers for that? Why should we be messengers for that and how can we be helping? Um, well, I personally feel that the biggest 
problem in our industry at the moment, the growing problem is obesity. It's a disease. It needs to be, it, it, it is a disease in itself. And that's, you know, the next stage is from the education on nutrition. Not everyone is, you know, not everyone who's, who's lean and looks that is healthy. It doesn't, that doesn't mean it, you know, but what I'm saying is, is for me, I, I get a lot of people now from 16 upwards who are ob obese and the links from that into type two diabetes and other various problems. It all starts with the, the, the increase in body fat. For, for me, I think one of the biggest problems is that, but it's general education, general education on nutrition. I went into a school a few years ago when I was a professional rugby team and I held up an apple to children of 400, uh, 400 children there. And they all said apple. And I said, what's this? And it was an avocado and they all said apple. The lack of education that we're having now with our generations is so bad. So it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And what Juice Plus is, I see it as obviously it's a wonderful way of getting massive amounts of micronutrients and macronutrients into us on a daily basis. But it's also a vehicle to help us educate. Yeah on various types of nutrition and lifestyle. We've got wonderful communities that we build. We have a very supportive network. And all our customers that are getting added into our groups just completely change their lifestyles, but it took them to take that one investment into their Juice Plus capsules to actually make that change. So, yeah, that's kind of how it's, I see it. It's definitely a door opener to better nutrition because if you start to uh, put families, uh, particularly children, on this product under the Children's Health Study, it makes it very, very easy um, and then, you know, people start to feel different. So then they start to make the connection between food and feeling good. And, you know, Hippocrates said it, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. We seem to have moved away from the fact that everything starts with nutrition, like, like James has said. The biggest problem I see, the biggest challenge I see is for the next generation. You know, I'm talking about kids under 10 right now because we have got a transgenerational inherited problem. And mostly due to the fact that the microbiome, the gut bacteria, from generation to generation has moved so far away from what it should be naturally that we now have digestive tracts that just don't work the way they're meant to. And this is why we've got kids with all sorts of allergies, you know, failure to thrive, you know, babies that are being put on hypoallergenic milk formulas from more or less the moment they start feeding. I mean, it's an absolute car crash. And as a result of that, We've got inflammatory disease showing up in, in the young generation. And as, as James has said, if you've got inflammation in the body, you've got a disease process waiting to happen. So unless we fix that, and it's really important that we fix it in the young, if we don't fix that, we're going to have an absolutely nightmarish scenario if you fast forward 30 years. And, then, and also physical activity. I mean, physical education in school these days is not physical. It's just physical education. It's not actual take part in the sport itself. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. We not only have we got, you know, uh, an education on real food problem, we've got overeating uh, of the wrong types of food. And obviously, backing up what Jeff said, genetically modified food actually kills good bacteria in your gut, which is not great. <laughs> so this is a problem. And we've got complete lack of activity. And they want to, to do sports now. It's all the computer generations. But yeah, we're in a completely bad situation. It's a growing situation. And everyone that represents Juice Plus on this call has that chance to change people's lives and perceptions and, and just yeah. generally educate and help them. Yeah. It's great. That's great. And it's, you know, we can feel the passion in terms of the, the need for education and um, the part that we can play in that, which is fantastic. So just sort of coming to the end and, and um, just touching on the clinical research, which is obviously a huge part of the backing as such of our, our product. I mean, I think our own experiences really are a key piece, obviously, um, but it is amazing that we have um, the research to back up on Juice Plus, and yet people will still question it. <laughs> Um, which I always find amazing because they're not blinking going to McDonald's and questioning what research is behind the burger or the burn, are they? But, uh, you know, as soon as you present something that has got that backing, then there's plenty of questions around it. What do you say uh, to people who question the clinical research um, and what, you know, how, ex how exciting is it that we have that? Well, if I, if I could just go a little bit into the history. When we first started with Juice Plus, there was no clinical research. Mm -hmm. And we were criticized because there was no clinical research. So you'd say to people, 
you should take Juice Plus, add it to your diet, see how you feel. And I said, well, you know, it'd be great if there was some research. Anyway, fast forward quite a few years and you've got 35 plus peer reviewed, you know, amongst those top level clinical papers. And, you know, now they're saying, oh, that clinical research isn't the right kind of clinical research. So, you know, you're never going to keep everyone, particularly the critics, happy. And I think you have to understand why those criticisms are there. And it's basically follow the money. Once again, you know, what we don't want, uh, if you're uh, somebody who has a competitive product or if you're in a particular industry where you don't want people to take charge of their own health, is, you know, you don't want people to get the idea that they can eat clean, take a few basic simple products and actually ward off disease so they don't have to look a doctor in the eye down the line. And, you know, the, the big criticism I get from people and the reason I can talk very confidently from an evidence base with not just my patients, but my professional colleagues, is that if you actually read the research properly and you read the actual papers, you'll realize that most of what's being said on Wikipedia, uh, particularly given that it's uh, largely the architect of that is a guy called Stephen Barrett, who uh, just Google Stephen Barrett and all will be made clear. But the thing is, um, the clinical research has to be funded so yes we fund the clinical research because the criticism is often oh well it's funded by the juice plus company the thing is no one would fund the research unless you know, our company want to find out what it will do when it goes into the human body so they funded the research in very very credible institutions uh, universities and hospitals all around the world and um, what you can buy the research but you can't buy the results the results are peer-reviewed gold these are gold standard papers they get submitted for publication. It's only the, the very, very, the most like stringent papers that will hit these journals. And we've got an impact score in the medical literature of over 100. That means that for all the papers we've got, which are 30 plus, on average, our research papers have been quoted three or more times by other researchers. So that means if there's been a, a citation of one of our papers, that's, that gives you an impact score of one. Well, we've got an average of three for every single paper. Now, that tells you that the other researchers out there in the big wide world who are looking at food as medicine, they're looking at phytonutrients, polyphenols, indole carbon, they are, they are going to our research as a benchmark. So don't let anyone tell you that our research is not valid or would stand up to scrutiny. Anyone, if they're telling you that, they actually haven't read the research themselves. Yeah. That's great, and, and um, yeah, I mean it is, it's, it's fantastic to have, and it's fantastic to have that confidence in it, um, and, and I completely feel like that, that, I, that somebody who's questioning it really has not looked into it, and actually often is just wanting uh, to create an argument against it in yeah. some ways. The, re the, research, the research also keeps us safe, Suzanne, because if you've got someone with an inflammatory condition, you don't have to get into a... I'm going to play doctor with Juice Plus, right? You can say, look, okay, so you've got some asthma. Now, I don't know whether Juice Plus can help you, but asthma is an inflammatory condition, and it's also to do with an immune system that's not balanced out properly. We've got research studies that show that immune systems will improve with Juice Plus consumption, and inflammation will get switched off. I tell you what, given that the research is there suggesting a benefit, why don't you add Juice Plus to your diet and see what happens for you? That way, we don't have to get into the whole you know playing doctor thing which is an absolute uh, that will get us into deep trouble so the research is there for a very good reason it keeps us safe and you know let, let's not play doctor let's just yeah. use the research for what it was intended for yeah. i think i think as well that was the biggest that was the push for me obviously i was given the product by a doctor but it, it's it was i was such a skeptical say no at all arrogant trainer which i keep saying i'm sure everyone no have met, met one of those i'm not arrogant uh, but I was, <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is, is that when I saw certain things, I saw the bioavailable, which was really important. It means that it's all absorbed. They had to make sure that was a, that was the case. Every, everything is, a, you know, when you, when you eat something, you will, you will be absorbed, but it's actually utilized by the body. That was a key thing for us. The second one was the oxidative stress study. Someone's having a chat to someone on there. I don't know who, I don't know, don't matter. but yeah, so, uh, Basically, I wanted to make sure that, you know, oxidative stress for me, uh, working in, uh, in, the, in the fitness profession, you know, 
we need to protect ourselves against free radical damage and oxidative stress. I don't want to go into much, too much, but the only thing that can do that is the power of plants, and we don't eat enough of it. And especially in professional sport, all we concentrate on is macros, macros, macros. But really, what we truly need is a hell of a lot of micros. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the studies that I looked at. That was all I needed to see. Um, I understood that I got that. Yeah. And even if you don't go into it that much, I don't know whether you do or you don't, but you must enjoy it from a personal trainer perspective to whatever extent, because my experience is that personal trainers can be some of the worst for really wanting to dismiss or jump on or, you know, whatever the case may be. And yeah, yeah, let me tell you that why, why that is. When I started in the fitness industry, it was regulated. It is regulated now, but there's so many fractional sort of courses that people do and so forth. And they, you know, they've gone from a couple of years long to like, you can go online for 45 pound and do a two day online course and you're a trainer. It is crazy. A lot of the, a lot of these companies are also sponsored by supplement agencies to help fund their courses. So what's going to happen is these trainers are coming through the, through the education system solely brainwashed thinking that they, they need to come out and they got this supplement for their clients and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's just the way it is. And it, what it's done is embedded this wrong, this, this bad information and trainers suddenly coming out muscle bound and completely arrogant and ignorant to everything. And that's what's happening. And I, I get it every day. I mean, I get tagged in posts. People ask me to answer these questions. I'm sure Jeff does all the time. And it's always a personal trainer attacking the, the uh, juice plus distributor. M most of the time, the juice plus distributor said something wrong, which is playing doctor, which Jeff is saying. But secondly, you get into argument with someone that may know a little bit more or someone that's basically completely misinformed and is a supplement taker themselves and they've got their own beliefs. You know, it's like trying to flog a dead horse. You're just not going to do any, any good with these people. So literally, when it comes to the standard of science and the research what Jeff is talking about, we have a bulletproof product, which is bulletproof science. And the best thing is it's done over 20 years by some of the leading institutions of the world. I've got their name to it and it's done on humans. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, you know, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Well, it, it, we are very, very lucky to have it as backing. Um, even if it's just, you know, we have it from that, in that way, we know that. And um, as much as we are lucky to have the research as uh, backing. We're also very lucky to have people like yourselves as part of the Juice Plus company and uh, who will give their times, time on calls like this for the benefit of the rest of us to get, oh, to get your knowledge and, um, and enjoy that. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Um, so thank you very much uh, for being on this call this evening. That has been amazing in terms of coverage. Um, I don't know if there was any last words that you just wanted to to say um, just before we bring it to a close, but that has been fantastic information from us all, for, for us all, sorry. Yeah, great guys. Thanks for everyone for joining. Um, please, if you've got any questions, just reach out to us and we'll do our best to get the answer to you within like 40 hours. I think there's a question just popped up now. I don't know if anybody. It was, there was a question that came up about what are the green powders I've heard about. It's a new person on the call. Um, I think that it's fair to say that the person who invited them to the call will be able to answer it for them. Um, but obviously it's all the wonderful uh, green and uh, green vegetables mostly that are in, the, in those capsules. They could be, they could be talking about uh, some of the supplements you see today, like true greens, like the veg powders. Uh, if they are, unfortunately, these when you look at these these products, I would say find out whether they are non modified uh, produce, which I guarantee they weren't. Ask to see the peer reviewed independent studies on that product, and don't forget they're not encapsulated, so they would have been oxidized. So you may as well go and put your face in soil and suck hard because that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> and the other aspect, there's one more thing to add there, and that is that we dry our product at a very low temperature to preserve the phytonutrients and the integrity of the enzymes. And the, the characterization of the capsule study confirms that. A lot of these other powdered greens and whatever else you're going to get, they're heat treated and they're denatured. So 
And particularly if you see that enzyme blends are being added back, then that's a good clue that there's been, uh, you know, some kind of heat involved in the process. So, um, yeah, that, that would be a clue. So, anyway, guys, look, that's been an absolute pleasure tonight. I hope it's been helpful. And I'm sure uh, if, if it's necessary, we didn't touch on maybe half of what we could have done. It might be nice to do this again at some point in the future. We would be delighted to do it again. We will book in a date and, um, yes, just highlight some of the other points because I'm sure, well, there are, there are masses of things uh, that could still be covered. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on the call. I'll just put it to a quick uh, gallery view before we go so that you can see many of the people who are appreciating you being here. And um, I look forward to catching up with you all soon. And have a great rest of your Sunday and a fabulous week ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. See you.